This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by North Shore Community College Leo Inc. Brotherhood Credit Union Daeolus Brothers Construction and King Movers and Storage. Good morning, happy November, and the start of another edition of the LCTV News. Be prepared for some spooky surprises, mixed in with several announcements from City Hall. With the cooler weather comes playoff season for fall sports, and the finalized list of MIAA power rankings for the divisions. Finished off with the triple boost of a TDI, EDIC, and Creative Cities collaboration, focused on supporting small businesses in the community. Here is the news for Friday, November 1st, 2024. After many stages, four years, and two mayors, the city, in partnership with Elliott Community Human Services, will be launching the LINCOM team later this fall. Once established, it will operate as an unarmed crisis response team, an alternative to police response, helping in situations involving conflict resolution, substance abuse, and mental health issues. Elliott has posted two positions for the team, a community outreach manager, and community support specialist, which they hope to fill quickly. Applicants for both positions must be proficient in both English and Spanish. At this time, the Collins Center from UMass Boston is serving as the project manager for the city. Lynn also worked with a marketing agency and gathered feedback from the community to create a logo that represents empathy, safety, equity, and approachability. Additionally, the city is hosting two meetings, one on October 28th and another on October 7th at 5.30 p.m. in Spanish at the Lynn Housing Authority. A recording of the full October 28th meeting is available on lynntv.org. Earlier this week, the City of Lynn and National Grid announced a community solutions partnership to create a new full-time energy manager position. According to a press release, the energy manager will, quote, help support the city's efforts to advance clean energy initiatives and sustainability goals. They will also identify and implement energy saving measures, enhance the city's overall energy efficiency, and help the community reach their decarbonization goals, end quote. The energy manager will loop in residents and small businesses through community outreach initiatives to help everyone reduce their energy burden. In the first year, the focus will be on improving energy efficiency in schools, municipal buildings, small businesses, and residential properties. To reduce annual utility costs, carbon emissions, and harmful environmental impacts. This partnership is being funded by a U.S. Department of Energy grant through the Infrastructure and Investment and Jobs Act awarded to National Grid in 2023. This money will fund the new position and help Lynn achieve environmental and energy efficiency goals. Anyone walking into the Lynn Museum and Arts Center was in for some fun on Saturday as they were hosting their community trick-or-treat event. Kids dressed in costumes such as Spider-Man, a firefighter, and even an axolotl could grab candy at several tables complete coloring pages, and try their hand at a ball tossing event for an afternoon of Halloween smiles and fun. The Lynn Museum and Arts Center was full of Halloween spirit the morning of the 26th. Kids dressed in a diverse range of costumes stopped by to trick-or-treat at tables, 
complete coloring pages, and even tried their luck at a ball toss. See, do this. Try it underhand, see what happens. Almost. I feel like you have a future as a baseball player. Families got the chance to both enjoy the Halloween festivities and wander around the museum to see their various exhibits. Tables included representatives from Foster MA and a special visit from the honorary fire chief, who made sure everyone received a piece of candy. There was a continuous line for the ball throw as participants tried to get three in to win a prize from the museum. It was a spooktacular way to wrap up the month of October and the Lynn Museum's Saturday event series. For LCTV News, I'm Danny Vittori. Keeping in the holiday theme, Halloween events took place all over the city this past week. Beginning with the Family Forward Resource Center's free Halloween trick-or-treat community event, the evening of the 25th. Staff came dressed to impress in costumes such as the popular Beetlejuice and classics like The Nightmare Before Christmas and Candyland. Next, it was the City of Lynn's turn with their annual party and parade. State officials joined kids in costume, where participants could get treats from various city departments for participating in one of two parades to the public library. A few streets away, Elliott CBHC was holding their own trunk or treat event, so children could trick or treat safely while being entertained by specially decorated cars. The night of the 29th was busy, as LCTV was also hosting the Latino Support Network's Resource Fair. Representatives from half a dozen organizations were present to educate participants in the programs they offer. A bilingual event, it proved to be a success, as 40 people came through to learn more about what these nonprofits have to offer. Hello, my name is Esmeralda Bisono. I'm with Emerald Cities Collaborative, and we are a national nonprofit working at the intersection of climate, economic, and racial justice. And I'm part of the Northeast office based in Boston here. Hi, everyone. My name is Cardellis Pies. I am the Economic Development Officer at the Latino Support Network, which is a local nonprofit based in Lynn, Massachusetts. We work on just providing different services to Lynn residents to enrich their lives in different aspects, but also we've been working a lot around housing justice and creating affordable housing units and things to help the community. So the event we have today is sponsored by Emerald Connections, which is a program here in Lynn, Massachusetts, um, with Emerald Cities Collaborative, the organization I work for, partnering with Latino Support Network here in Lynn. Um, we're here today for a resource fair, and we've got a bunch of great organizations in Lynn. Um, so some of them are Leo Incorporated. Um, we've got the Community First Partnership, that's the Mass Save team, um, Neighbor to Neighbor, Lynn United for Change, and the Green Energy Consumers Alliance has a no-cost solar and electric vehicle program that they're sponsoring today. Bueno, esta noche la red de apoyo latino y conjunto con la organización Emerald Cities Collaborative tenemos un evento hoy para ayudar a los residentes de Lynn a aprender un poco de diferentes programas de ayuda um, energéticas. Uh, tenemos con nosotros una variedad de compañías como Leo que ayudan a las personas con asistencia de recursos energéticos, eh, la, organiz la organización Lynn Swampscott Community First Partnership que es un conjunto entre las dos ciudades para ayudarlos a acceder a diferentes programas de Mass Save. También tenemos a las organizaciones de Neighbor to Neighbor y Lynn United for Change que ayudan a diferentes personas a um, pelear por sus derechos de hogar y también la organización de Green Energy Consumers Alliance que ayuda a las personas para acceder programas de solares y también de um, energía eléctrica para sus vehículos um, a bajo o sin costos. Next Tuesday, November 5th, is Election Day, so be sure to have your voting plan ready. Polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and residents can view a map of polling locations in all wards on lintv.org. Sean Reed will be running uncontested for the 11th Essex State Representative seat, covering West Lynn and Nahant. 
Local contested races are for the Essex County Clerk of Courts, Register of Deeds, County Commissioner, and Governor's Council. On a national scale, residents will be voting for President and Vice President, as well as U.S. Representatives and Senators for Massachusetts. There will also be five questions on the ballot. Question one, the state auditor's authority to audit the legislature. Question two, elimination of MCAS as a high school graduation requirement. Question three, unionization for transportation network drivers. Question four, limited legalization and regulation of certain natural psychedelic substances. And question five, minimum wage for tipped workers. Wrapping up the senior night celebrations from last week, St. Mary's girls soccer took down Saugus 2-1. Saugus scored first and entered the half up 1-0. But 19 minutes into the second, Andrea Basta netted the equalizer for the Spartans, followed by Sophie Skabikis, scoring the game winner less than five minutes later. They followed this up with the 1-0 win against Pentucket on the 26th. In boys soccer, the Spartans completed their 11th win in a row, one to nothing against Weston. Mehdi Kemik scored the game winner and only goal of the entire game. Last Friday, classical boys soccer fell to Chelsea four to two. Kip did not do any better as they were blanked by Greater Lowell three to nothing. In football, Everett overpowered a beat up classical team to the tune of a 48 to nothing win. For reference, the Rams have lost multiple quarterbacks and their starting running back to injuries. Everett scored on every possession in the first half. Classical did find the red zone late in the fourth, but could not punch it in before time expired. The passing game carried English over Somerville 35 to nothing on Friday night. QB Jaden Rosario was on fire, throwing for 208 yards and four touchdowns, two on connections with Limbert Thomas. Jordan Hernandez added their fifth score on the ground. As of the 25th, the 6-2 Bulldogs are ranked 17th in Division III MIAA Power Rankings. Lynn Tech entered enemy territory and took care of business 27-6 over Lowell Catholic. Four Tigers went home with touchdowns, topped by Jacob Garcia with two. Their defense was airtight all night, supporting an offense that has been firing on all cylinders. St. Mary's finished the year undefeated at 7-0, following their latest 42-14 victory over Cardinal Spellman on the 26th. Five Spartans scored behind a fierce offensive line that was not letting anything get through. As Sean Driscoll stated at the beginning of the year, a strong line was the key to victory this season. They are currently ranked 7th in the Division VI MIAA Power Rankings entering the postseason. The Tigers played hard, but were ultimately bested by innovation three sets to none over the weekend. Despite the loss, three Tech players still recorded double-digit nights. While St. Mary's topped off their season with a 3-1 win over Cathedral to finish their season at 9-11. Saturday, it was all Kip Lynn Tech as their girls cross-country team won the Commonwealth Atlantic Conference meet to finish the season undefeated at 4-0. Well, Marlin Fernandez was named conference MVP for her performances in dual meets, while coach John Hogan was named coach of the year. For just the second time this season, the Patriots are back in the win column. It wasn't pretty, but New England clawed their way to a 25-22 victory against longtime rival the New York Jets. Drake May ran for an opening drive touchdown, but left the game in the second to enter concussion protocol. From there, the offense stalled, but defense kept them in the game. A missed PAT and field goal by the Jets left the door open, and the Pats scored 11 in the fourth, including the go-ahead touchdown with 20 seconds remaining in regulation. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the Celtics have begun this season 4-1, coming from behind to take down the Milwaukee Bucks 119-108 on the 28th. What makes Boston so hard to beat is if opponents shut down one player, the others pick up the slack. As shown in this win, where six Celtics scored in the double digits, led by Jalen Brown with 30 and Peyton Pritchard netting 28. 
They suffered their first loss of the season to the Indiana Pacers, 135-132 to in overtime on the 30th. Justin De La Cruz's position did not even exist six months ago. Now he is the outreach manager for EDIC, connecting with other groups in the community, such as Union Street's TDI Fellow and the Creative Collective. De La Cruz was on site to discuss their teamwork and all the projects they have been able to expand across the city. Hear more on the lowdown. Hello and welcome back to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have on Justin De La Cruz from EDIC. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know we had to do a bit of shuffling to get you on here, but I'm glad we made it. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're here to talk about really some of the partnerships the EDIC has with the TDI, Creative mm -hmm. Cities, all of that. So where would you like to start with this? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, economic development uh, for the city of Lynn, um, to your point, we have a lot of uh, different business partnerships, uh, mass development being one of our closest uh, partners. Uh, Tristan Foley is the TDI fellow for this area. Um, he's really in charge of working the Union Street corridor, so our downtown, and really trying to uh, revitalize and, and uh, you know, bring it back up to what we want it to be um, for our community. So um, the, the initiatives, both the TDI and Creative Cities, are both uh, mass development initiatives. Mm -hmm. So okay. these guys are funding, they're giving this money to these different um, sectors within their business to do certain things. So um, with TDI, we've been able to help the local businesses on Union Street. We did that last year. Um, there's a new program rolling out this year. Um, Creative Cities is specifically for the arts and cultural. So okay. our artists, our, um, you know, the music scene in, in the city, um, you know, it, it really anybody that's a creative um, can benefit from the Creative Cities initiative. And you mentioned you're rolling out a new program, the storefront improvement, which is happening right here on Union Street Absolutely. for businesses along here. So what's involved with that? Yeah, so that's actually a really cool program. Uh, they yeah. uh, ran this in Lawrence, um, where essentially the only stipulation is you've got to be on Union Street. You have to be a business on Union Street. So um, there's going to be some money available to you, for the business owners to not only sit down with an architect and be able to develop what the storefront should look like or what they want it to look like, mm. but also implement that design so okay. at no cost to the business owner um, applications are available right now they can reach out to me or Tristan uh, we did our first round of outreach last week we'll be doing a second one uh, hopefully before Halloween um, to make sure that everybody has the information in their hands and if they have any questions they're able to contact us mm -hmm. and when would applications how long do they go for? When do they do? Yeah, so they're due by November 12th. So we're going to give you a little bit past, uh, a little before the holiday, right? But we yeah, want to make right. sure you can enjoy your time with your families trick-or-treating. And, you know, we have enough time for any questions uh, to be answered in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So you're mentioning, it seems like, you know, mass development, USDAC, you all kind of add different pieces to these projects, what's the main thing you would say EDIC brings? Uh, EDIC, really what we bring is support for our business community. Right. Um, so, you know, my, I'm the outreach manager for EDIC and uh, my job function is to really be out in the community and hear the voices of the business owners on what their needs are. Right. Um, we try to assess those needs. They look different for every business owner, but connecting people with resources and letting them know what's available to them, um, I, I really think has been the most important thing and that's really the the role that we play within this community is, um, you know, we're able to point you in the right direction as somebody that is a with a business idea, right? Yep. So our entrepreneurs, right. or if you've been in the business, you know, for 20 years in the city of Lynn and you've hit a roadblock, we can try to help you work through that. And what kinds of products have you you've been working on, either with TDI district, Creative Cities? What kind of products have you been? Doing. Yeah, so um, with the uh, TDI uh, last year, we were able to help, I believe it was seven restaurants that are wow. located here on Union Street. So these seven restaurants received technical assistance uh, support from RevB, which is a restaurant consultant service. Um, they were able to put it together uh, a report for each business owner and say, hey, these are the recommendations on where things could be improved, right? right. Uh, and then each business actually received money. It was about $14,000 that they received to implement anything that was 
on that report. So wow. some business owners uh, decided to purchase furniture. Uh, some business owners uh, decided to upgrade their HVACing system. So it was really up to the business owner, and that's what we want to make sure. Um, you know, we're, we're, that's always at the forefront is we want to make sure we're doing what the business community wants and what they need. Hmm. That you actually just brought in that point really well. Is one of the pictures we're showing is new furniture in one of the restaurants. Oh, awesome! Here. Awesome, uh, El Gran Jaguar. Yes. Awesome. So yeah, uh, El Gran Jaguar. Actually, uh, Erica, hello. Uh, she was actually able to purchase uh, furniture. I believe it was from Mexico. But if you look, if you walk into that restaurant, um, if you haven't done so before, I strongly encourage it. The furniture is beautiful. The decorations inside of the restaurant. Um, are just aesthetically pleasing. So definitely give them a check. Um, they were a beneficiary of the TDI program. Tristan was able to um, you know, get them to the finish line and get them that funding. And you've already talked about it so much, but why is it so vital to have these collaborations, working with other organizations? Yeah, so I mean, it, it, you, you want to make sure that everybody is working towards the same goal. And, yeah. you know, our goal at EDIC is making sure that our community is what we want it to be, right? Um, you know, the business community, same thing. We want to make sure that the business owners are heard and they're getting the support that they need. There's so many different organizations doing this type of work. And a lot of times, they're, you know, uh, they're, they're overlapping yeah. the work that they're doing. So um, what TDI and the Creative Cities initiatives have been able to do and support is really getting everybody, getting all the players on a table, um, sitting at a table and having that conversation. How can we support one another? Um, so with the creative, uh, creative Cities, excuse me, we want to make sure that, um, you know, Lynn is, is thriving. We, we have so many artists. We have so many musicians. Um, you know, we want to make sure that they feel supported, and that's what the Creative Cities Initiative. Um, Luis Cotto is the, the project manager. Um, he is awesome, and he's really done a great job getting out into the community, making connections, right, and bringing additional people to the table. So um, we want to make sure that everybody's voices are, are being heard, but also the organizations that are doing this work, we're not overlapping and we're really just uh, lifting one another. Mm -hmm. Or if there are pieces that are overlapping, you can try to connect and bring the right. others. Hey, Correct. you're doing some more things, maybe you could collaborate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And looking, you know, looking towards the future, future goals, what, what would you say you're planning within the next, you know, this year, next year? Yeah, so um, EDIC, I'll speak for EDIC. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, our, our, one of our primary functions is making sure that any funding that's available, whether it be through the state of Massachusetts or the federal government for entrepreneurship, uh, we're, we're attacking that. We're, we're mm -hmm. aggressively pursuing these grants. So um, we've got a couple of things in works, um, you know, uh, certain projects. I can't go too, too in detail with <laughs> it, uh, but I'll speak on Urban Agenda. Urban Agenda is uh, something or an, an, a grant award that the city of Lynn through EDIC has received for the last three years. Uh, and we've had two partner organizations, e for all and North Shore Latino Business Association, who have been able to offer uh, business cohorts and incubators um, for entrepreneurs within the community. These classes are completely free of charge due to the grant funding. So that's really been our focus uh, with TDI. Um, I know Tristan is working um, very closely with the city on getting some wayfinding um, done for the temporary platform and trying to make sure we link that all into the downtown area, making sure that people that come off of the train know that two steps you know, down the road, there's these awesome restaurants and you know, there's these you know, beauty salons and barbershops, right? So right, working yeah. that and then with Creative Cities, um, uh, Lucretia Thompson, uh, you know, Luis uh, Cotto, like these guys are just, a, that's a powerhouse of a team. Um, to really focus on just one initiative on what the Creative Cities is focusing on, hmm. I, it would be a disservice to the work that they do. But um, it, honestly, like they, they were able to put together uh, this year through the Lynn Spire grants, which is a re-granting. Yeah. Uh, we had the final Fridays at the Lynn Museum, which, you know, has been a hit. Um, we've just had the Lynn Music Foundation put together the first Lynn Film Festival, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So these are all initiatives that Creative Cities and that team was able to support, not only financially, but guide, right? So right, yeah. guidance was probably the, the, the biggest takeaway from that. So 
I know I said a lot, but you know, that, that means that there's a lot of things happening within the city of Lynn, and we want to make sure that, you know, if there's any interest, um, you know, from you or, you know, family member, um, you know, we, we want you to connect with us. And you mentioned, you know, you're the outreach manager, which EDCN had before, so you really get to shape this job and go out into the community and really connect with people. Absolutely. So uh, that is my, uh, that's my joy. That's the reason I wake up every day and I, I come to work happy is because um, I feel empowered, number one, by my director, Jim Caldell. Uh, I am Latino, um, you know, so hablo español. So we see a lot of, of, of uh, a lot of people coming into our office that may have not come into the office, you know, two years prior to me starting, right? right. And that could have been for, uh, uh, you know, many different reasons, um, but I'm able to really structure my job the way I see it fit in what the community needs. So, um, you know, I'm able to set up my appointments, go out and meet with business owners. I'm able to attend different events from the North Shore Latino Business Association to the uh, Greater Lynn Area Chamber of Commerce to E for All, right? To right, Latino yeah. Support Network, which, you know, shout out to Hugo. They do a great job putting these business incubators and these uh, tech goes home for businesses, right? right they do these yeah. classes at night and I'm able to jump on. Uh, I think our next one is in uh, next week. I'm able to jump on for an hour and give people an idea of what EDIC is, who I am, and what we can help you with. So uh, really rewarding work and, um, you know, just uh, it, it's really good to, to, to know that we're making changes uh, in, you know, Leonard's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can just, you can tell how passionate you are. You can see it, hear it in the way you talk. And I just want to, I do have to wrap up in a moment, but I want to thank you again so much for coming on to share all these incredible opportunities that you're providing. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having us. And again, anybody uh, within the community Latino, siéntase a libertad de contactarme. Si tiene alguna pregunta, estamos para servir. Awesome. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anytime. And you are, you and... Of course, EDC are welcome back here anytime. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. And once again, I'm Danny Vittori. This has been the Lynn Lowdown, and we'll see you next week with more guests. Next up for the City of Lynn's Fall Park cleanups is Lynn Common, the morning of the 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., help beautify this recognizable landmark that hosts a whole list of events throughout the year. Supplies for the cleanup will be provided, and volunteering can be counted towards community service hours. No registration is required, and the cleanup will be canceled in the event of rain. Join Pine Grove Cemetery in a big kite celebration from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 2nd. A Guatemalan celebration commemorating the Day of All Saints with large colorful kites bringing family and friends together. Learn more about the traditional foods cooked, the rich cultural heritage, and see the beauty of these traditions without ever leaving the city. As part of a new initiative by the City of Lynn, the Marine Corps' birthday will be celebrated with a flag raising on November 8th, marking 249 years since their inception in 1775 to support the U.S. Naval Forces during the Revolutionary War. This event will be held on the steps of City Hall at a time that has not yet been announced. That brings us to the end of another newscast. Watch this and all episodes of the news, along with all our staff and member content, by visiting lingtv.org. For videos, including all our recent Halloween coverage, head to Ling Community Television on YouTube. To stay updated on breaking news, press releases, and upcoming events, follow us on social media at Ling Community Television. I'm Danny Vittori, this is LCTV News, and we will see you next week. This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by North Shore Community College Leo Inc. Brotherhood Credit Union Daeolus Brothers Construction and King Movers and Storage